In this episode of Detroit Performs, a photographer captures the beauty of nature around us. An artist captures animal portraits on canvas. And watch an artist enhance reality by making model prints with modern touches. It's all ahead on this edition of Detroit Performs. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to Detroit Performs. I'm your host, DJ Oliver, and today I'm coming to you from the Detroit Zoo, where all of our artists today feature animals in their work. Right now, I'm at the newest attraction at the zoo, the Polk Penguin Conservation Center, which just happens to be the largest penguin conservation center on the planet. Oh, just look at those little guys go. I'm gonna continue to watch them while you check out our first segment. Steve Ghetto is a photographer who captures his love for wildlife and the wilderness in his images. Making beautiful pictures is just a matter of, of time. The beauty's out there. All you gotta do is be out there enough to capture it and be in front of it when it happens. As a little kid, I was out hunting frogs and hunting turtles, and, and then I picked up a camera to start documenting things that I saw. I've been taking pictures for over 30 years. I started off with a Minolta X370, which was a real entry-level camera. I explored the woods and fields around my home and photographed basically anything in nature that wouldn't, wouldn't stop moving. I actually, I was going through my desk the other day, and I found an envelope filled with with uh, my best shots from back in the day, just little three by five prints. And there was a bald eagle in there and, and uh, some white-tailed deer and a green heron and things like that. One of the goals that I'm trying to do is, is to get different behaviors. And one of the things that I love to photograph is action, is being able to stop and act, stop action, photographing birds in flight and animals running and, and show people something that they couldn't see with their naked eye. Well, my camera actually takes 10 frames per second. When you're photographing birds in flight, it's all about wing position. You want their wings up or you want their wings down. You want them in a pleasing position. So the more frames per second you can, you can take, the better your chances of capturing that peak action. Michigan's really a great place for a photographer to be. Michigan is such a great state because of the diversity of wildlife we have. You go up in the Upper Peninsula and it's, you may as well be in Canada. We have wolves and lynx and bobcat and, and all the different, and the boreal forest species up there. And then you come down here into Southern Lower Peninsula and we have, you know, great white-tailed deer herds and turkey and all the songbirds. And it's very, very diversified. I've been photographing in Kensington for probably 20 years photograph this handhill crane nest and there's an osprey nest there that I that I shoot pretty regularly and then they have a beautiful heron rookery that's a great opportunity for photography. Taking photographs is a lot like fishing. You know you're out there working all the time and you're taking a lot of pictures but really what we're doing is we're trying to get those trophies, that wow factor image. When I go out I'm, I'm always open to serendipity. If something if an opportunity presents itself, I'm going I'm going to make that picture, but generally I go out with a purpose. Most people are surprised to hear that many of my images are pre-visualized in my head. I think of a picture that I want to make and then I go out and figure out a way to make that picture. And that's one of the things that I love about nature photography is, is solving those puzzles, figuring out how can I get a cardinal on this pine branch or how can I get a picture of the sandhill crane beating its young. And that's, that's one of the challenges I really enjoy in nature photography. If I could only photograph one thing, it would probably be birds. I really love photographing birds. There's, I mean, they're so beautiful and they have interesting you know, courtship behaviors and, and nesting behaviors and, and things like that. There's a lot of things to photograph, but um, then after that, it'd probably be the macro photography. And I do a lot of things with, with high-speed flash, where I use high-speed flash to freeze action. So this is my latest and greatest project. This is something I put together to photograph moths in flight. So what happens is the moths come out of the woods and they fly around this light 
And as they fly around this light, there's two lasers that cross and make an X in front of the, the camera lens here. And when they break the beam, it takes their pictures. One of the drawbacks of macro photography is the depth of field, the zone of sharpness in a picture. So the closer you get, the less depth of field you have, the less sharpness you have. So now with computers, now we're able to do something called focus stacking, where we take a series of images at different focus points and then combine them in the computer and give us unlimited depth of field. I travel a lot. So, so when you, you go to Africa, every time you get in a safari vehicle, you're, you're, it's a brand new day and around every corner you just never know what you're going to see. You could see a cheetah chasing a gazelle or, or two lions having a fight or a, a great giant bull elephant walking across the Ngorogoro crater. So you get, you got to be open to those possibilities when they present themselves. I go to Africa every year. I've been to Costa Rica probably almost a dozen times. Uh, the Galapagos, Ecuador, Peru, Belize. Uh, all over North North America. It's, it's the experience of a lifetime. It's, it's absolutely epic. A lot of my favorite pictures actually probably aren't my best pictures because when I look at my pictures, I've got all the memories of what was going on when I made that image. I spend enough time around animals that I, I can weed the signs when they're getting nervous. But I will tell you, one time I was out in Yellowstone and there was a bull moose and he was walking through the river and he stopped behind this hill and I wanted him to take one more step. So I gave him my, oh! which is female moose for, hey, big boy. And this guy came running and I was with a 600 millimeter lens. I was way far away and he come running right at me. I started off shooting film. So I sh actually shoot digital a lot like I shot film. I don't do a lot of Photoshop and things like that to my images. I shoot a format called digital raw. And what that means is it's an unprocessed image in the, in the camera, out of the camera. So I have to color correct it and sharpen it. And that's about all I do to my images. It's important for me to be true to, to nature and to the, the image because I want to preserve it the way it is. And I don't think I need to do anything beyond what I see through the camera usually. You never know what people are going to take away from your work. I would hope that people would, would take away a love and appreciation for nature and, and in a perfect world want to help preserve it and protect it. You can learn more about Steve Ghetto on DetroitPerforms.org. Weatherly Stroll is an artist who grew up in Michigan and always had dogs, cats, and horses in her life. After a stint in Colorado, she returned to the Metro Detroit area and now focuses her work on capturing animals on canvas. I'm an oil painter. Most of my work is oil on canvas. My great-great-uncle, Gary Melchers, was an American Impressionist painter, and he has work at the DIA. We had some of his posters around our house and books about him, and there's a museum in Virginia where his studio and home was, so my mom and I took a visit to that when I was, I think, 10. On my mom's side, my mom is also an artist. She does sculpture and graphite pencil drawings. I had dabbled in painting my whole life and done a lot of landscape paintings and when I finally committed to making art my career and painting full time, I was painting landscapes and a friend of mine asked me to do a portrait of their yellow lab that had just passed away. And I had never attempted anything like that, so I, but I said, sure, I'll try it. And so I did the portrait of Georgia, their dog, and then kind of one thing led to another and word of mouth got around and I found my own little niche of painting animals. And it's, it's nice because it's something I've always loved. I grew up with dogs and horses and cats and so it's a fun way to capture them and commemorate them. Well, I grew up in Metamora, so I grew up in the country and with horses and dogs, and I grew up riding horses, and so they've always been a part of my life, and I just think they're such majestic animals and such character, and a lot of my paintings have been based off of that, you know, just my, the love of the animal themselves, and each one is such an individual. I did a project for the White Horse Inn recently, which just reopened last year. It's 24 by 24 inches, and it's a, a portrait, a, a painting of a white horse, and it was a horse that I saw at a horse show recently and took some photographs of, so it's, 
it's a very stark composition with a dark background and the gray horse and some really beautiful morning light. It's backlit, so it's a painting that I started earlier in the year and have kind of set it aside for a while and now I'm revisiting it. It's been a fun way to tie in what I love to where I grew up and moving back to Detroit, it's been fun to reconnect with the community here and I feel like there's a really strong community that has really helped me and my business get going. In an ideal situation, I get to meet the client and the animal that I'll be painting and take photographs and discuss what the client's interested in. And then going from there, it's editing the photograph that I work from. It makes a, lot, a big difference to meet the animal also and get an idea of their personalities. And then I'll sketch the animal's image on, just with pencil on the, on the canvas. And then usually I will work kind of throughout the whole canvas and go back to different parts and build up layers of paint. With oil paints, they, they take a little bit longer to dry than acrylics, and so you have more freedom to go back and work into them without them drying too quickly. That being said, it's nice once they have dried to go back and add more layers of paint that show through. Sometimes it's just a trial and error, depending on, especially with dogs and the way that their hair falls and their markings. It, you know, you just kind of have to experiment sometimes and figure out what can capture that. I have a photography background in, from high school and college, and so I'm, I think in my own work that I am doing just for my personal work, I'm drawn to more stronger compositions. I'm looking for different angles, kind of unique perspectives. And with my traditional portraits, it kind of depends on what the client is looking for. Whether it's a large portrait, they want the full body, or a smaller one of just their head and neck and shoulders. I think sometimes in photographs you lose a little bit of the emotional connection. And I think with paint, I try to capture that in my portraits and capture more of their individual expressions and character. Probably one of the most challenging parts of the painting is making sure that their eyes are lifelike and and have that spirit within them. If the eyes are dead to the viewer, then the painting doesn't work at all. I got involved with the Humane Society when I moved back to Michigan about four years ago, and I was involved with the Bow Wow Brunch, their main fundraiser. And I enjoyed that, but I, I felt like there was something more that I could be doing with my art. And so I've decided to donate a portion of my proceeds every year to the Humane Society. And this year I'm developing a, a project for Art Prize in Grand Rapids based on the Humane Society's homeless animal population. And so the finished piece will be about 5 feet by 15 feet long and it will include 300 different animals, dogs, cats, bunnies, birds, chickens, kind of the plethora of animals that the Humane Society has at their different locations. It's hopefully going to help generate awareness of the sheer numbers of homeless animals that need adoption. I like to do a variety of things, and so uh, besides the animals, I also paint landscapes, and I think we live in such a beautiful state that when I travel around the state, I try to capture moments and come back to my studio and, and paint those moments. I was in Isle Royale last year, and it's such a beautiful, beautiful place. So I was able to capture some of those spots that we visited and uh, now I'm trying to paint them. I sell paintings all over the country, but it has been great to be connected here. And just, I feel like there's a lot of opportunities here that I might not have had had I stayed in Colorado. I'm such an animal lover, so I hope that that comes across in my work. And I hope that people just get in sheer enjoyment from it and you know I, I have always loved art and I love looking at different paintings and I hope my work conveys that to people also that they just hopefully enjoy what I do. Check out that polar bear right behind me y'all. You can learn more about Rutherly Stroll and all the artists featured here today on DetroitPerforms.org. Now, let's check out some upcoming events happening in and around the D.
To discover more events in Greater Detroit, visit ICSITY.com. I'm standing in front of my favorite animal, the tiger! Next up, what happens when you combine ink and color pencil? For artist Jack Puchita, these two items help him create unique prints that leave a lasting impression. Take a look as we go inside his studio. I have gotten in the last few years in, into the, uh, the realm of the birds. I have wolves, I have buffalo. It's all uh, outdoors and it's, there's, uh, there's nothing that is captive about it. It's all very free and, and very much uh, uh, birds and animals that, that roam uh, on the countryside and that uh, have their own way of, of living and, and very much a freedom attached to it. My name is Jack Pachuda. I am a print artist. We use ink, we use colored pencils, we use textures, we use lots of different media to create what we want to create. As a print artist, I make mono prints. Now mono means one, so each of my prints, each of my originals is distinctive. Now yes, we can make G clay copies of those prints, but each individual print has its own textures, it has its own feel, it has its own way of impressing individuals who take a look at it. The nice thing about this is that you don't always know what the finished product will look like. The background and the foreground are done on two different presses. So the background sometimes creates an image of what you want to put on the foreground, and the foreground sometimes lets you select a background that you didn't really realize would go uh, with that foreground when you started to print. So you work back and forth, and it's a surprise kind of an art at times because you never really know what the finished product is going to look like, and you're always seeing things. You see different shapes, you see different objects, and they all go together to leave an impression. And that's exciting, because it, it's serendipity, it's, it's finding something you didn't expect. I work with a uh, very high rag content paper. It's Reeves BFK, it is a French paper. It measures roughly 30 inches by 22 inches, and it, it absorbs ink. That high rag content means it's almost more cloth than it is paper because when you print on it, when you use the ink and the colored pencil on it, that color is vibrant, it stays. It doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't stay on the surface, it actually absorbs into the paper itself. So it's a, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful way to work. So everything you see is ink and colored pencil, and it's a matter of how you manipulate those two different uh, items that determines the final impression of the finished piece but it's a very specialized colored pencil. These are Prismacolor. What that means is the Prismacolor is a very high wax content colored pencil. So you can blend colors because with that wax, you can put one color on top of another color and you can blend them together to achieve a very dramatic effect. A lot of the backgrounds inspired the outdoors. And right now, the last couple of years, I have done quite a few prints with wildlife and with birds. In 1942, there were only 15 whooping cranes in the entire nation, and there was only one migrating flock. It went from Alberta and Canada down to Texas. Well, now there, there are two flocks of, of migrating cranes. One is in Wisconsin, and it goes to Florida. That's the second flock. And the reason for that is that the International Crane Foundation in Baraboo had a breeding program. Now there are roughly 200 cranes that uh, migrate from Wisconsin to Florida every year and back again, of course. So in the summer, Wisconsin is the only state in the entire nation where you will see whooping cranes. It's called whooping it up. And that's because uh, it's the mating dance. The dance of the crane is very dramatic. When you see the male and female whooping crane, they, they jump, they spread their wings, they make a very plaintive sound, and it is very distinctive, uh, something that you won't see any place else uh, in, in the world. And that's why I was inspired by that, because this is very distinctive in terms of what Wisconsin means in, in the wildlife arena. When you are printing off the image, you're printing on different backgrounds. You're, you're printing sometimes just on a, a piece of paper that doesn't have any background, and you're finishing it off as you go. You may be finishing off two or three prints at one time, each of which is unique. This is not quick. Uh, this takes a while, because you are printing, you're cutting stencils, uh, you are using the pencils, you are using markers. 
those two processes of uh, uh, finishing it off with, with those, uh, that's what creates the vibrant colors and, and creates the total impression of the piece. I can't tell you how long it takes because it's different based upon each individual print. If you take a look at the pooping cranes, the image of the cranes themselves is, is drafted in a very, uh, very realistic way, but the background is full of textures and full of colors and full of abstract images. People will see different things in those images. Art is very personal, it's internal. It is not objective, it is subjective. So people will see different things in that piece and every one of those things that they see will be the correct thing. Everybody says it's, it's just something that is, is unique compared to the other things they've seen. Well, I think every artist should find what they like. So because of that, I've, I have focused on the, the, uh, the printmaking and I love it. It's, it's, a, it's a great way to express yourself. You can find out more about Jack Putita on the Detroit Performs website. And that wraps it up for this edition of Detroit Performs. As always, for more arts and culture, head to DetroitPerforms.org, where you'll find featured videos, blogs, and information on coming arts events. Also, check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you so much to the Detroit Zoo. I had an incredible time watching and learning about all the animals. You better come out and check out the Polk Penguin Conservation Center, as well as all the other great attractions they have here. Until next Tuesday. Get out there and show the world how Detroit performs, y'all. I'm DJ Oliver. Thanks for watching, guys. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.